<coughs> Week 14. Welcome, everybody. We got some goodies coming in the mail, but you'll find out soon what those are. Let's see what happens. Maybe. Simon's too smart, he knows everything. <laughs> it's because he's at home, he sees all the planning. All right, let's pray. Close your eyes. Hands together. Okay, let's pray. All right, dear God, thank you for bringing us here and help us now to concentrate, uh, learn the story, and uh, pray, Lord, that we'll have fun with some of the activities afterwards. And we thank you. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, through him, we can have eternal life. We can be saved. And we pray these things in his name. Amen. Okay, let's... Three rules. Sit quietly. Two. Pay attention when the bishop's talking. <laughs> Number three. That's right, everyone put your hand up. Down right, put your hand up. You know, put your hand up. Down. Up. Down. Up. <laughs> okay, today we're looking at Ezra and Nehemiah. I think I had the numbers wrong last week. I had Second Chronicles as 15. It's actually 14. So it should have been 13, 14. So Ezra, number 15. Nehemiah, number 16. So these guys go hand in hand because they were both involved in when, after they were in the captivity, they went back to go rebuild Jerusalem. So we're going to look at rebuilding the wall. So you remember last week, we learned about Israel going into captivity. Why? Because they disobeyed God. They didn't do the right thing. So they had to go into captivity. The nation of Judah, which was the southern kingdom, went into captivity for 70 years. Well, that's a really long time. How long have you lived for? 80? Are you 80 years old? No, how old are you? Seven. So you've lived for seven years. So you times that by 10. That's how long they were in captivity for. 70 years. So who's this? We're looking at the story of Nehemiah. So Nehemiah is in captivity. And he asks somebody, somebody comes to him to tell him how the children that were brought in the captivity of Judah, how are they going and somebody tells him, well, the wall is broken down and, you know, Jerusalem has been destroyed. So that makes Nehemiah very sad. So he prays to God and says, you know, God, if there's a way that you can show us your mercy, you know, he, he prays to God to show mercy on his people. Now, who is Nehemiah? Nehemiah was the king's cupbearer. What does that mean? Cupbearer. That means you hold the king's cup. Can you imagine that the king is so powerful and so important? Hello. So powerful and important that he has somebody to hold his cup for him. You know when you're eating dinner and you have a cup of water, if you have a cup of juice? Imagine if you had somebody their only job was to make sure that when you wanted to drink, they come and bring your cup for you. <laughs> that was Nehemiah's job. He was the king's cupbearer. So in the presence of the king, he wasn't normally sad, but today he was sad. And the king was saying, you know, welcome Nehemiah, why are you sad? So isn't it interesting that God used Nehemiah? He was, you know, even though he was the king's cupbearer, he was a good testimony. He was always in the presence of the king, that he was given this opportunity to explain to the king why he was sad. So the king saw that he was sad and said, you know, Nehemiah, why are you sad? You know, is this something that's making you sad? And Nehemiah said, well, he heard about his people that were brought into captivity and his city where he came from and it's burnt down and the wall is broken down. And he asked the king, you know, would you let us go back and build, rebuild the wall? So because the king liked Nehemiah, he allowed the Jews to go back and rebuild the wall. So that's what they did. 
They were given permission to go back and rebuild Jerusalem, rebuild the temple. So they went and they worked together. You know, they all worked as a team to rebuild this wall. And a lot of them all came together. They were excited, you know, to work hand in hand. You can see how they're all working together as a team. See, can you get great things done when you're all by yourself? No, but if, you, if everyone works together, how long do you think it'll take you to move one of these rocks, stack them all up all by yourself? Many years, right? Long, long time. But you see, if you all work together, right? So if Abel, you work together with Timothy, you work together with Jeremiah, if you guys all work together, then you can make progress. Right? So they all work together. Now when you're doing something for God, is there sometimes people trying to stop you from doing what's right for God? Yeah. And you know there was some evil people. One of their names was Sanballat. They didn't like the Jews doing a good work for God and rebuilding Jerusalem. So they tried to stop them. But luckily, they didn't listen. They just kept building it and eventually completed the work. Now, where does Ezra come into the story? Ezra was a scribe. Do you know what a scribe is? A scribe is somebody that writes out God's word, copies out God's word. That's what Ezra did. But because he spent a lot of time writing out God's word, you know, now we just read the Bible in a printed book. We don't have to write it out. But back then, before they could print out the Bibles, they had people whose job was just to write out the Bible, copy it and copy it and copy it, so that they had copies of God's Word. So these scribes that would write out God's Word, because they would be very knowledgeable on the Bible as well, they would also be the ones teaching the Bible. So as Nehemiah led the people to rebuild the wall, Ezra and other prophets were there as well preaching to the people God's word, reminding them of God's grace, reminding them of his love, reminding them of the laws and the commandments that they are to keep once they finish you know, rebuilding their city again. Now here's our verse today. It comes from Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. So built we the wall. That's what we're talking about today. Right, the people rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together. Because right? when you make a wall, you're putting the blocks all together, aren't you? If you have holes in the wall, it's not going to help, is it? If you have holes in the wall, what are you going to do? You're going to climb through. Somebody as small as Jeremiah, right Jeremiah? Somebody as small as you, if there's holes in the wall, you're going to be able to get through the wall. So that's why the wall has to be all joined together. Close all the gaps so people can't get through. Unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. It takes hard work, doesn't it? But if you all work together, if all the people have a mind to work, then it makes the job go a lot faster, a lot easier. All right, so let's read this together. Nehemiah chapter 4. Verse 6, so built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. Good. So what is that a picture of? The picture of all the people of God building up the city of God and the temple of God, that's a picture of us today. When we tell people about Jesus and we tell them, hey, you have to believe on Jesus, that's us building the wall, not with physical stones, but with people. You are the stones. You, you too. <laughs> You guys are the stones. You know, when you believe on Jesus, that's when you become a stone in God's building. So all of us that believe on Jesus, that's the real temple that's being built. All right, so we got an activity today. We got, I got two activities I want to try today. 
We'll see, see how we go. To remind us of how we build a wall, that we are the wall. So we're going to try and build our own wall. Have you guys ever done a human pyramid before? This is a human pyramid. See how you go on your knees and your hands? So we're going to have one row, and then the second row is going to be on top. I'm going to see how high we can go. All right, so let's stand up. We'll go over here. We're going to give it a shot. We're going to try and build a human wall. And if we can get one, we'll get a photo. So come over here, kids. Hi. 